a very warm welcome to all the participants for this month's Shanti Devi Memorial Health Justice Lecture. Special <coughs> welcome to our distinguished speaker, Dr. K. S. Sashdeva, and our chair, Professor Ramakan. Shanti Devi Memorial Health Justice Lecture Series is a series of online lectures on eTalks exploring intersectoral solutions for specific health problems. Health is an outcome, determinant, and enabler of sustainable development. So do we believe. Without any further ado, let me introduce the chair of Shanti Devi Memorial Health Justice Lecture Series. One of the children of late Mr. Shanti Devi Shankar, Professor Dr. Ramakan, continues to take the baton forward and actively engages on a range of health and social causes. Professor Ramakant received the WHO Director General's Award in 2005 and has been the former head of surgery department at King George's Medical University and former chief medical superintendent of King George's Medical University as well. In 2012, so he was the national president of Association of Surgeons of India. In 2013, he was the vice president of Sark Surgeons and currently he is the president of Lucknow College of Surgeons and principal and dean of GCRG Institute of Medical Sciences and Hospitals. Over to you, Professor Ramakant. Thank you, Madam Shubha. Uh, welcome, friends. welcome, friends, to this episode of Shanti Devi Memorial Health Justice Lecture Series. Before we share more about the invited guest speaker who will deliver this month's lecture, let me share briefly and pay tribute to my mother, late Mrs. Shanti Devi Shankar, in whose memory this lecture is instituted. Shanti Devi was born in rural parts of Uttar Pradesh, India. And despite odds and challenges of social and economic inequalities, fueled by the gender disparities, she not only boldly confronted these stereotypes, but also lived her life upholding values and having a life influencing impact on others. She passed away on 21st December 2006. Shanti Devi Memorial Health Justice Lecture Series will feature noted health experts from around the world who have devotedly worked on specific health issues and interlinkages within health sector as well as between health and non-health sectors. The focus of each lecture is to explore solutions that require intersectoral collaboration for improving specific program outcomes. This month's lecture will be delivered by Dr. Kuldeep Singh Sachdeva, who is a widely respected name in several public health disciplines. He was a senior clinician at India's prestigious tertiary care hospital in Delhi for over 20 years before moving to polio eradication program. And then as well as you know, he made a seminal contribution in shaping India's battle to end TB for several years. He was one of the major game changers in the fight against TB as well as drug resistant tuberculosis in the country as additional director general at the revised national TB control program. Currently, he serves as the Deputy Director General of National AIDS Control Program at the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. And being experienced about all these three things which we are going to discuss, he is a wonderful person and most suited for this lecture. Regarding the uh, present lecture, one of the major challenges friends confronting us is not only specific health or development problem, but also how different programs work together. Rationing, making intersectoral cooperation and coordination is one of the most difficult parts. Indian government has committed to end hunger and AIDS by 2030 and end TB by 2025, while these three are related to each other intensely. Scientific evidence is paramount in role of nutrition and food security and health security, generally speaking, and TB and HIV program outcomes are better if nutritional support can be ensured. Let us learn more 
on how can we achieve best possible synergy between these programs. And with that, I thank you, Dr. Sadeba, for accepting to deliver this talk. We do look forward to your insights. And over to you now, Dr. Sadeba, please. Thank you, Professor Amakant. Uh, to begin with, uh, uh, let me thank uh, you and the organizers, uh, and the organizers for uh, taking this initiative. Uh, as this is the first uh, of the lecture series, uh, it will be prudent on my part to acknowledge the contribution and spirit of uh, yourself, uh, Professor Dr. Amakant, and your mother, Shanti Deviji whose name the lecture series have been instituted. I hope this series uh, serves as a platform for cross-learning and collaboration and fulfills the vision in which it, it has been uh, instituted. Uh, so uh, having said that, I will begin my talk uh, and my screen is uh, visible. So, Shobha, can you see the screen or the presentation there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, I'll begin by uh, uh, the structure of my presentation is I'll talk about the food security, the concept of food security. What is the Indian scenario uh, with respect to specifically undernutrition, TB, TB and HIV, and both uh, co infection? What is the importance of uh, nutrition within the TB control program and the HIV AIDS control program? And what are the linkages between the two programs and the uh, food security program? So, having said that, the food security as uh, defined by FAO is that food security is a situation that exists when all people at all times have physical, social, and economic access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food that meets their delivery needs and food preferences for a an healthy and an active life. And uh, what has been noted is that around uh, 870 million people were estimated to have been undernourished during the period 2010-2012. Uh, uh, this is again drawn from the uh, FAO uh, database. So uh, almost about uh, more than a sixth of the world's uh, population suffers from uh, undernutrition, and most of them belong to the uh, the developing countries. And then, what is a food security? So people are considered to be food secure when they have availability and adequate access at all times to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food to maintain a healthy and a active life. Now, this uh, food security is uh, defined at uh, various uh, parameters. It's a, they define it at individual level, at the family level, at the level of the community, at the level of the nation, region, and the uh, global food security. So, uh, the community food security uh, exists when all uh, citizens obtain a safe, personally acceptable nutritionist diet through a sustainable food system that maximizes health choices community self-reliance and equal access to everyone. And at the household level, uh, it refers to the ability of the household to secure either from its own production or through purchases adequate food for meeting the dietary needs of all the members of the household. So having said that, I'll uh, shift my focus now to the uh, Indian scenario in this regard. and. Uh, what is the level of undernutrition which we see within our uh, country? So uh, this again is based on data from the National uh, Family Health Survey round uh, four, where about a fifth of uh, adult population is uh, undernourished or uh, malnourished, and women are uh, with women being slightly more than uh, men being uh, undernourished, and the proportion of undernourished uh, adults is higher in the 15 to 19 age group in women and then those in the lower quintiles of income. Uh, when we compare with the this data with the NFHS 3 data, we see a dramatic improvement in the nutritional level. In the NFHS 3, 
almost uh, a third of the population had uh, undernourishment, uh, suffered from undernutrition, whereas now it's about a fifth of the population. So there has been a dramatic improvement in between the two rounds of National uh, Family Health Survey. Uh, coming to the uh, scenario of two diseases uh, within our country, India, as we all know, is the highest uh, tuberculosis uh, burden country in the world and accounts for about uh, 2.8 million cases annually, and it's, it's about a fourth of the global uh, TB burden, up by a few uh, percentage points uh, since there has been a revision in the estimates of uh, new uh, cases. And nearly about 480,000 uh, people die from tuberculosis annually within our country, and uh, that's about a third of the global uh, burden due to deaths. The incidence has been uh, slowly declining over the past decade. And there are various uh, factors which are uh, contributing to this uh, slow decline and the maintenance of the epidemic, which are the social behavioral factors, the economic factors, the environmental, and the, and the undernutrition is also one of the major uh, barriers in the elimination towards uh, TB. As regards uh, HIV, where are we are the uh, have largest burden country in the world with regards to tuberculosis. For HIV, we are uh, placed at number three on the global scale in terms of absolute numbers. In terms of rates, uh, we are much better uh, compared to many other countries, both for TB and HIV. Uh, having said that, uh, India also mounted a uh, response to HIV, which has been unprecedented and uh, applauded uh, across the world. And we uh, almost uh, we have we now have uh, more than one million uh, patients who are on antiretroviral uh, treatment, and the total is about 1.4 million on treatment currently. And we are aiming to take this number to 1.5 million in uh, uh, two years' time frame. The deaths due to uh, HIV AIDS have again decreased uh, dramatically uh, over the last uh, decade. They are down by about. Uh, 67% compared to a global reduction of uh, less than 50%. Uh, so India has done uh, much better compared to the uh, other countries around the globe. So as so as the response to the HIV is concerned. Uh, so and and we see keep on seeing the declining trends in the HIV incidence and the HIV uh, death rates. Now, what is the importance of uh, food security for both TB and HIV programs? Uh, for both programs, as we know, the diseases are uh, stayed wherein uh, your nutritional requirements increase many folds. And this uh, is true for both TB and HIV in medical par parlance. We say that both are uh, a catabolic uh, stay. So undernutrition within TB uh, results in impaired uh, cell mediated immunity, which may lead to development of tuberculosis and which in itself can lead to uh, loss of uh, uh, I mean, no, no desire to have food and also release of certain chemicals which suppress your desire to have food and further increase your need for nutrition. And then this uh, vicious cycle uh, continues and and that's how the epidemic is keep, keep, keep uh, propagating itself. So, uh, and what uh, the various studies have shown is that uh, there is a relationship between the uh, TB incidence and the individual's uh, body mass index. And it has been shown that the risk of uh, TB increases by about 14% for each percent, uh, each unit reduction in the body mass uh, index. Again, a large population-based study from uh, North India has shown that uh, distribution of nutrition was highest among women in the uh, rural uh, sections of uh, rural uh, hinterland of India in the younger age group, 15 to 19, I already alluded to, and in the uh, poorest of the poor, that is the lower quintiles of the uh, wealth index. Also, uh, the studies have demonstrated that uh, if you have TB, your risk of relapse is uh, four times uh, higher. Chances of getting TB the second time is four times higher if you are undernourished compared to if you have a normal weight. 
And even with the TB treatment, what has been observed is about uh, that about a third of men and a fourth of women, uh, only about a third of a men and a fourth of a women had a normal range of uh, body mass index after a successful uh, treatment. Uh, as an official research study conducted by the RNTCP has shown that nutritional uh, support to TB patients results in uh, much better outcome than this study is currently under uh, publication. Similarly, uh, the interaction between uh, nutrition and HIV again uh, is well known and uh, understood. Uh, HIV per se leads to, because of the disease per se, leads to insufficient dietary intake. There may be malabsorption due to disease, there may be diarrhea due to HIV disease. There is an altered uh, metabolic state, there is an altered uh, nutrient uh, storage within the body. And all these leads to uh, nutritional uh, deficiencies, both at the macro level as well as in deficiency of uh, micronutrients, which again, uh, results into immune uh, suppression. This immune suppression again then leads to increase in the viral load, it hastens the uh, disease progression, increases in the uh, opportunity due, due to HIV. Again, this is a vicious circular cycle, one keeps one step keeps feeding into the other step and the uh, patient goes uh, down there. And it's a well known fact that uh, Undernutrition accelerates the progression from HIV to AIDS, and also the, it increases the risk of transmission of HIV from mother to the uh, child. Uh, the World Health Organization uh, Assembly in its uh, 59th uh, meeting in 2006 uh, acknowledged uh, this, uh, the link between the nutrition and the HIV and the passed an enabling uh, resolution which recommended that nutrition be made an integral part of the response to the HIV AIDS and uh, the suggested the programs to strengthen, revise and establish guidelines and assessment tools uh, for nutrition in patients with HIV AIDS. Also to support uh, advocacy to raise awareness of urgent needs to address nutrition in the HIV AIDS uh, response. So this enabling uh, resolution uh, helped many programs to take up uh, nutrition within the HIV AIDS uh, control program. Within India also based on uh, the WHO recommendations, the technical uh, consultations were held, the guidelines were uh, developed which provide uh, very practical recommendations of uh, institutionalizing the nutrition support within the health facilities. So uh, these uh, Based upon these guidelines, the counselors in the ART centers, the integrated counseling and testing centers, and various other uh, facilities where the service delivery for HIV is offered were trained on to uh, deliver counseling on uh, nutrition requirements and nutritional awareness. And th these guidelines orient uh, service providers to nutritional requirements of uh, people living with HIV AIDS at different stages of infection. They also orient service providers on what strategies to adopt to address these uh, nutritional uh, deficiencies, both at macro and the micro level. Uh, the stress on the food security also clearly was clearly articulated within the Millennium Development Goals and Friends and extension into the Sustainable uh, Development Goals. Here, the Sustainable Development Goal clearly talks about uh, zero hunger. So these were adopted in the year 2015, uh, and it says end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture as one of the requirements for uh, food security. India, along with about 190 plus other countries, have uh, committed to sustainable uh, achievements of sustainable development goals by 2030, and ensuring food security and ending her hunger, based on the premise or the principle that no one will be left behind for want of uh, food. The TV program also uh, recently uh, developed guidelines uh, for nutritional assessment and nutritional support uh, within their program, uh, uh, just uh, in the year uh, 2017 itself. These guidelines have been released by uh, 
Honorable Minister of Health on the World TV Day in 2017. These are guiding uh, principles for providing nutritional care and support to TB patients from uh, and principles are basically drawn from the uh, World Health Organization uh, guidelines and they have been adapted to the Indian context. The objective is to provide guidance on nutritional assessment, counseling to patients with active TB and all as well as their contacts within the country. Uh, it also provides guidance on management of under nutrition in patients with active TB in India. It also provides operational guidelines for implementation of nutritional support to households with patients with active TB in India. Now, uh, I now go over to the what are the linkages between the two disease control program and the food security program within the country. Much of the uh, linkages uh, are many linkages are direct, many are indirect. So direct linkages are where you directly provide a food basket or a food subsidy or uh, food in uh, some other form. And indirect linkages are where patients are offered uh, cash, in, uh, cash incentives so if they are uh, enabled uh, to support their families and themselves with adequate uh, nutrition and uh, ensure uh, Food security. So within the linkage mechanism, the process uh, adopted is uh, three-step process, which includes nutritional assessment, nutritional counseling, and uh, nutrition management. Within the uh, nutritional assessment, it is the assessment of the nutritional status of the individual uh, patient first. So the first level of uh, sensitization is when you know the status of an individual, that there is a need to provide them with the uh, some. Uh, Added for extra nutrition and guiding on how to support on uh, nutrition so that he can fight this disease as well. So there are anthropometric uh, measurements and we classify the nutritional uh, status. The nutritional counseling, uh, which is uh, very well adapted within the HIV control program and will now be also be a part of the TB control program, is wherein uh, you introduce the concept of a healthy and a balanced diet. You develop a uh, patient understanding on uh, foods and what uh, the good food uh, eating habits and how they can use locally available uh, nutrient rich food, uh, which is available cheap so that they don't uh, take recourse to the costly substitutes which are available in the market and again sink into the uh, poverty cycle. Uh, within nutritional uh, management, uh, recommendations are made on what what the energy needs are, what the protein needs are, and what is the need for the micronutrients, and how, how we can manage the moderate to severe undernutrition in patients, and how can we enhance their family uh, ration quota and the uh, food basket. Now, uh, within the RMTCP uh, program uh, for food security, uh, the various uh, direct schemes which are available are. Uh, one is Antodya Annayojana, which is uh, administered by Ministry of uh, Food and uh, Civil Supplies, wherein uh, to patients who are below poverty line and also a certain group of patients who are uh, uh, senior citizens or they do not have dependents to support them, or those who are physically disabled or widows uh, with families who are unable to store, uh, support them. Even if they are not uh, below poverty line, they get. Uh, Entitlements within the Antodya Yana Yojana. Then there is a scheme under the Integrated Child Development Services, wherein again uh, food uh, support is provided within uh, the, the, these schemes. The Food Security Act, uh, which has been recently uh, passed uh, in the last uh, few years, is currently under implementation in um, about a third of the Indian states, and uh, wherein again the patients and their families are being supported with uh, ration, pulses and other uh, nutrients. Uh, having said that, there are also uh, disease specific schemes wherein uh, various state governments, uh, notably uh, in Chhattisgarh, Karnataka, Mumbai, uh, not Maharashtra per se, but within Mumbai through the CSR funding, Kerala and Tamil Nadu uh, have found funds have uh, found special funds from the uh, CM uh, Chief Minister's Kitty and they are supporting the uh, TB patients uh, with uh, 
additional uh, nutrition, especially the multi drug resistant TB patient and the TB HIV uh, co infected patients. So, the linkages uh, between the food security, uh, there are various opportunities also within the uh, various programs for linking with the food security. While programs may not be directly expending money on uh, food because uh, for programs uh, primarily uh, invest their resources on uh, diagnostics, treatments, uh, counseling, and other aspects, they leverage resources from the Panchayati Raj institutions corporate uh, social uh, responsibility leveraging on other schemes of uh, government of india uh, the patients who are admitted within uh, government hospitals are of course provided inpatient uh, nutritional uh, support there is a enhanced ration and a double ration scheme for few patients there are various uh, ngos uh, who support uh, patients in certain pockets of the country and uh, based on uh, Food basket procured. So, RNSP, that's how RNSP is actually uh, leveraging and operationalizing and mainstreaming various other ministries and departments within the disease control to enhance the food security of uh, TB patients so that they have uh, better outcomes and some of them don't uh, develop the disease altogether or don't they, they are not reinfected or they, they don't relapse from a already cured disease. Similarly, uh, HIV uh, started these schemes much earlier, about a decade earlier, more than a decade earlier, than the TV program. And they have been leveraging on all these schemes uh, through the Antonia Yojana scheme. So, almost all uh, big states in the country are implementing this Antonia uh, Yojana for uh, HIV patients, and uh, irrespective of their uh, uh, status, they, they can avail uh, these uh, services. Within the integrated uh, child development scheme, again, uh, they are availing and close to about 40,000 beneficiaries are uh, children uh, availing uh, of food uh, security within the scheme. And some uh, states are providing uh, double nutrition uh, within their HIV control programs. And both, they are finding funds from, again, the uh, other than the Ministry of Health or the state uh, departments of health. Other ministries within the uh, states are supporting the uh, nutrition of these uh, HIV infected patients. So, close to about uh, directly and indirectly, about 400,000 uh, HIV patients are uh, assured of the uh, food security, especially those which are marginalized and who are more in uh, need of uh, this uh, food security. The uh, linkages again. Uh, uh, Within the National AIDS Control Program, devolve around the strengthening of uh, district level mechanism for enrollment of patients, establishing mechanism for uptake of schemes. So, there are dedicated uh, uh, program people who are interested with the task of mainstreaming and linking patients with these schemes, social protection schemes. Uh, many of the uh, other schemes, uh, PLHIVs, are not considered beneficiary in many other schemes, TB program. We'll have to take a lesson from uh, the HIV program in this and do an advocacy or a TB patient also uh, or in many other general schemes for food security and uh, a basic minimum package for social protection has been evolved for HIV patients. There is also a considerable uh, emphasis on uh, expanding the social protection for uh, people living with HIV within the National Strategic Plan for HIV AIDS for next uh, seven years up to 2014, which has been uh, passed by Ministry of Health uh, last month. So to conclude, uh, both the disease program, uh, what, what is needed is that we need to now institutionalize uh, nutrition uh, education within the disease control program, improve uh, access to the nutritional counseling, scale up uh, community-based uh, nutrition uh, interventions, also within the reproductive and child health program, uh, we are uh, strongly advocating uh, having a component of nutrition for uh, pregnant mothers so that uh, uh, they, at least a section of the society which is more uh, vulnerable are adequately healthy and they don't uh, break down into diseases and have a stronger immunity and they don't pass on uh, much of these uh, food insecurity to their next uh, progeny. 
Also, village health uh, sanitation and nutrition committees is a platform where uh, there's a lot of talk going around on uh, enhancing nutrition to these uh, patients. And there is a lot of synergy and inputs which are being worked with the other departments. Uh, the National AIDS Control Program has uh, signed a memorandum of understanding with about uh, 20 or other ministries to extend HIV services within their departments from their own budget and support uh, people living with HIV. And, uh, uh, so with this, I conclude and I'll say that though adequate nutrition may not be able to cure HIV infection or uh, the TB disease per se, but it is uh, essential to maintain the immune system and sustain the physical activity and achieve the optimal uh, quality of life. So. Uh, Thank you everybody for uh, listening. Uh, I'm available for any uh, clarification, comments, suggestions, or questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sadeva. It was a very nice and comprehensive talk. You tried to connect all these you know, missing links. And uh, I'm sure the uh, people must have understood that part very clearly, that in these situations, especially HIV, AIDS, and tuberculosis, the demand for energy is increased. And the 10 to 15 percent to up to even even 100 percent is required, and therefore all these aspects which you have told, they have to really co collaborate and cooperate. Then only we can achieve success in controlling these these programs and getting a better outcome. Thank you very much, really. We are really enjoyed that talk, and uh, we have learned a lot from that. So now, thank thanks a lot again. Thank you, Professor uh, Makat, and uh, I look forward to. Uh, some uh, queries or questions uh, from other participants. We now open for a discussion session. Uh, participants, please use the chat function to send in your written comments or raise the virtual hand you see on your screen to speak. You are welcome to give your comments, remarks, or share your experience or get any clarifications if need be. We already have a few comments and remarks pouring in, but uh, I'm just requesting you to use the chat function or raise your virtu the virtual hand you see on your screen. Uh, we have a comment from Dr. Rajesh Sharma. Uh, he says, thank you Dr. Sasteva for such an enlightening, enlightening talk and connecting the, the dots. When India is aspiring to eliminate mother to child transmission of HIV, it is sad and deeply concerning to learn that undernutrition accelerates progression from HIV to AIDS and risk of transmission from mother to babies. So we have to end hunger if we want to end AIDS and, and want to eliminate mother to baby transmission of HIV. Uh, Dr. Sajdeva, that means ending hunger probably is a more challenging and daunting task. And could you please share your insights on how to seek intersectoral and interministerial Interprogrammatic collaboration required for ending hunger, TB, and AIDS. As you have said, a lot is being done, but I think still a lot remains to be done. Madam, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Rajesh, for raising that and uh, Madam Shoba. So, what needs to be done is that the programs per se have to have a separate uh, identified person within the East Disease Control Program who can actually. Uh, reach out to the other ministries and departments uh, and uh, a strong advocacy at the senior uh, official level is also needed uh, at the level of the bureaucracy and the uh, political level that we need to reach out to other ministries to get support for nutrition. Within NACO there is a separate uh, division which is called mainstreaming division. The main task of uh, mainstreaming division is it, it actually mainstreams the disease within the other uh, sectors which are beyond health. So it reaches out to them, they are the highest uh, officials within them, sensitizes them, sensitizing them to the issue of uh, the HIV AIDS and then uh, encourage them to adopt those uh, uh, service practice within their uh, uh, departments. So through this uh, mainstreaming division, uh, the HIV AIDS program has been able to sign a memorandum of understanding with about 20 uh, other departments and ministries, including Ministry of Coal, 
telecommunication, shipping, transport. So they all uh, implement uh, all these uh, initiatives and the national guidelines within uh, for their uh, staff and other uh, people who come in contact with them from their own uh, resources. So they have even uh, established within uh, HIV parallels what we call as targeted intervention sites. Uh, Ministry of Transport has implemented one of the national highways from their uh, own budget. Similarly, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, sensitization within the TB program now also that uh, though the, the studies have demonstrated that the outcome of chemotherapy or drug treatment uh, is uh, irrespective of the nutritional uh, status of the patient, but there has been a growing realization that uh, if patients do not have money to feed themselves, they are not going to take uh, the drugs. So definitely the provision of food security enhances the adherence uh, to the treatment and thus indirectly improves the outcomes uh, within the TB patients also. And also a recent uh, study by Anurag Bhargava, uh, which is published in uh, Lancet, has clearly shown that uh, almost, uh, if you look at the TB incidence, 55% of the new cases of TB are coming from uh, the population who have a BMI of less than 18.5. So those who are undernourished have more chance of uh, breaking down into TB. So there is a lot of scope uh, to work with the other uh, departments and ministries to extend the benefits of food security to the people who are undernourished. So uh, TV program has also learned from that they, they have their intervention within uh, nutritional uh, rehabilitation centers across all the states now. Uh, through their advocacy, almost six, seven states uh, from their own chief minister funds have uh, uh, budgeted for nutrition in uh, TV patients also. So at least these will improve uh, relapses and other outcomes in the TB patients. Maybe a, a, a dedicated unit within the TB program would help them to mainstream much of these activities in their uh, disease control uh, networks. Uh, thank you. In fact, we have a comment which is directly related to what you said just now. This is a comment from a public health activist uh, who says that no one left behind is the mantra. And that is what the SDGs also talk of. But probably the ones being left behind in the TB program and HIV AIDS programs are dying of hunger and uh, are dying of hunger, and they are the most marginalized and difficult to reach communities. Uh, so, can you share some insights on how to reach to these marginalized people, who are the hardest to reach? Yeah, the, again, the programs are uh, taking new initiatives to reach the marginalized people. TB program uh, launched an active uh, search campaign in the month of January this year, wherein they went from house to house seeking uh, symptoms of TB from the patients. And through that uh, house to house search in uh, different uh, districts, they could get uh, an additional yield of uh, 500 plus TB patients and at the same time desensitize the community on the risks of the TB, what are the common TB symptoms. And again, uh, the second round of that active uh, research is, will be carried out uh, in the second uh, half of July 2017. So there, uh, this is one uh, way with, which is an active uh, research where they are going to house to house. They also have uh, you know, programs to, because most of the TB patients, uh, more than 50% of the TB patients actually are outside uh, of the program reach. So, they are involving the private practitioner, both formal and informal, on a very, very uh, large scale through various uh, non governmental organizations and also with the support of uh, Global Fund. So they, they will, uh, they have a, a strategy what is called public private interface agency, so which, which is again being scaled up to around uh, 50 odd uh, urban uh, uh, cities where they will, uh, with a dedicated focus, they will reach out to the private practitioners and, and then again through them reach out to the patients who do not uh, come to the national program or who are very irregular on their treatment or they seek to get diagnosed but then uh, they move to uh, other practitioners or to keep shopping. 
so that's the, the these are the various kinds of uh, strategies with the TV program has adopted. Similarly, the same strategies are adopted within the uh, HIV program. Uh, the epidemic being of different nature here, the what HIV program uses is what we call as a respondent uh, driven approach, wherein uh, they identify uh, the key uh, people who have high risk behavior and what they call, call them as seeds and through incentivizing them, they uh, ask them in a very confidential manner who are the other people who may be having such high risk behavior uh, and then uh, uh, reach out to them in a context uh, sensitive manner. I mean, the nature of food disease is very diff different, whereas you can go for an active uh, search in the community for a TB disease. You cannot probably uh, or should not go for an active search for an HIV disease here. It's more of a referral or a snowballing uh, approach which is adopted within an HIV program. So again, uh, we are intensifying this snowballing approach. We are also uh, trying to reach the new youth which gets added every year uh, uh, and become sexually active uh, population when they move from childhood to adolescence. So adolescence is another uh, vulnerable group which the program is uh, reaching and we have collaborated with the adolescent uh, health and the adolescent education program within the for counterpart uh, ministries and we are trying to again reach uh, the adolescent and the other out of school youth through youth clubs we have uh, also promoting youth clubs in the schools colleges to spread the messages on the high risk behavior and then to encourage them to uh, come forward so these are the various strategies which the both the programs are adopting based upon their own uh, epidemiology and the local context to reach the or to reach populations. Thank you. Uh, participants, please use the chat function or raise your virtual hand to ask your queries or give your comments. Uh, we have a comment from Dr. P.S. Sarma. Dr. Sarma, would you like to share your experience and comment? Uh, madam, Actually, yes. as I have already given, the AP state branch of the TB station is main supporting the nutritional needs for selected TB patients in all the districts of Andhra and Telangana since last year. We are giving them 300 rupees per month and the, and the patients are selected by the DTCO and also the DMHO as a subcommittee and uh, we are continuing the same program. And this is my uh, sharing the experience. Yes. And how has it helped? Has, in what way has it helped? Can you share that? And uh, actually, the the amount is directly related to their respective bank accounts, and uh, we are following it up, sir. Uh, I would just like to mention that Dr. P. S. Sarma is uh, a senior member of the organizing committee for NatCon 2017, and he's a noted lung health expert. Yes. Uh, Dr. Sajdeva, I would like to know by when does India hope to achieve to stop parent to child transmission of HIV? You Deep, said it does. Uh, we are committed to eliminating parent to child transmission of HIV by 2020. So, and uh, we are actually very much uh, close to achieving that target. The current transmission rates are less than 5 percent. Uh, down from almost 35 to 40 percent uh, in the pre-ART era. Now the transmission rates are uh, less than 5 percent chances that a child will get infected if the mother is HIV positive. Uh, so those interventions are being carried out. Uh, the challenge is to reach uh, all the pregnant mothers. Currently about 65 percent of the pregnant mothers the program is able to reach and we are aiming to reach 100 uh, percent by uh, 2020. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from uh, Malvika Sharma. If Malvika wants to ask the question herself, uh, she is welcome to do that. Malvika. Malvika wants to know if there are any schemes currently in place, particularly in Delhi, for nutrition for MDR-TB patients. And she thanks Dr. Sajdeva for a very informative talk. Uh, uh, I was aware, uh, I think the, the 
unit of Stephens Hospital was supporting MDRTB patients for uh, nutrition uh, when I left the TB control program. And uh, another NGO in Outer Delhi was also supporting. So uh, I'll advise Malvika to get in touch with the state TB officer of Delhi and he will uh, he can give you her the specific information. Okay. And thank you, since you have mentioned St. Stephen's, uh, I would like to share that uh, uh, I documented stories and interviewed several patients of MDR TB and TBHIV co-infection uh, who were on nutritional support uh, program, uh, an NGO supported program, and the treatment mm -hmm. outcomes were much better, much better than in the general populace. So, and you are corroborating that, what you said yeah. just now. I, I request the participants to please keep on sending your questions using the chat function or raising the virtual hand. Uh, we have a question from Dr. Archana Trivedi. Uh, if Dr. Trivedi wants to ask the question herself, she may do so. Dr. Trivedi says it is a very informative session and does the food secure under the food security is the nutrition provided which is sufficient for patient or for the family? There are under the food security act it is actually for the family uh, Antodya Anna Yojana also covers the uh, family but different schemes have different uh, annotations and uh, the uh, delivery mechanisms, but most of the schemes actually provide the whatever even if you provide food security to, to the patient, we provide it with the intention that he will uh, share it with his family. Because generally what we have seen is that uh, the breadwinner generally uh, does not eat or if there is a food shortage etc. They would like their children and other uh, dependent members to have food and then uh, have their food themselves. So if both direct and indirect uh, support for food actually benefit both the patient and the family. Uh, Dr. Sisdeva, uh, you mentioned, or in fact, uh, the data says that uh, around 50% of uh, people living with HIV are on ART. Uh, what about mm -hmm. the rest? Shouldn't shouldn't all of them be on ART, or is uh, what is the protocol we are following? So but the HIV program actually also evolved uh, over the last decade. They started uh, uh, providing free antiretroviral therapy in the year 2004 and started first with the pregnant mothers who were HIV positive. And slowly and slowly they started expanding this uh, scope of providing free drugs to newer and newer group of patients. So initially uh, the antiretroviral therapy was provided only to patient who are severely uh, had severely compromised immunity or what we uh, call in technical uh, parlance as CD4 count of less than 250. And then these guidelines have been successively relaxed from 250 uh, then the program moved to a cutoff of 350 then they moved to a cutoff 500 and now uh, about two months back we rolled out a study what is called test and treat or treat all. So now there is no restriction on uh, putting uh, anybody on treatment based on their CD4 levels. As soon as you get diagnosed as HIV positive, you are offered treatment. So having said that, uh, since it has been rolled about two months uh, back, we are seeing about uh, enrollment of uh, additional uh, 25,000 patients uh, for the last two months. I mean, last two months I've seen addition of about 40 to 50,000 additional patients, and we hope uh, that by the end of year we'll have additional about 200,000 patients on treatment and by in next two or two and a half years we uh, hope that all those who are HIV positive will uh, approach the national program for free drugs and we will also set up uh, environment and mechanisms that they are enabled to approach the national program and seek treatment. Okay, thank you. With you at the helm of affairs, and other people like you at the helm of affairs, I do hope and I am confident that this is going to happen. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. K. Sachdeva, 
whose insightful talk surely inspired us to think differently and in a more integrated manner. Thanks to lecture chair, chair Professor Ramakant and each of the participants. The, the lecture, the lecture got streamed, streamed on YouTube recording and audio podcast will be made available, available to each one of you soon. Till we meet again next month for July's SGM Health Justice Lecture. Goodbye and best wishes. So, uh, thank you, so uh, and uh, Professor Ramakan and uh, Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. Thank you.